Saint Teresa of Lisieux, written, directed, and produced by Reverend Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen. In this video, Reverend Dr. Mullen discusses Saint Teresa of Lisieux's mission in life as it unfolded for Saint Teresa and examines Saint Teresa's natal chart that reveals her strengths and wonderful gifts seen during her lifetime and afterward. Reverend Dr. Mullen talks of the scent of roses associated with St. Teresa's presence. Both Dr. Mullen and I have experienced the scent of the roses when meditating about St. Teresa in the past, and there were no roses in the area where we were located. Now, Dr. Mullen will talk about St. Teresa's life journey as it is associated with her natal chart. This is Dickie Joe in our downtown Orlando, Florida, astrologer and paranormal investigator with the story of St. Therese of Lisieux, the little flower of France and the secondary patron of France, along with Joan of Arc. There's a belief that everyone's life is like a triangle. One angle or one side involves money, one involves love, and then the third angle is health. That's perhaps the most important one. The third side of the angle, if it's out of balance at any one time, has to be worked on and healed. Um, if there is poor health, we can't really enjoy love or money, so all of the angles can go out of balance. And health is the one to work with. That's what the story of St. Therese of Lisieux is all about the magic of good health, the miracle wished for by many, and how can it happen. St. Therese of Lisieux was a healer and remains a famous healer in the minds of the faithful. She comes to us through the scent of roses, and if there is a fragrance of roses, it might possibly be that this saint will bless you. She's a really intriguing figure. The little flower, um, was born Therese Martin in Alençon, France, the youngest of nine children. So she's always called the little one or the little flower. She was born January 2nd of 1873 at 11.30 p.m. She was to die very young, less than 25 years later in the infirmary of a Carmel convent in Lisieux, which is another town in Normandy, France. Only a handful of people ever knew of her during her short life, and she entered the Carmel at 15. It would seem that now, coming up on 200 years later, few would know or ever care that she ever lived, but she's known and venerated the worldwide instead. She was canonized just 28 years after her death. Her death occurred on September 30th, 1897, and she was canonized on May, May 17th of 1925, which is remarkably fast for the canonization of a saint. She was from a, an obscure middle-class family in a provincial town, and yet millions around the world declare her as a miracle worker. The worldwide circulation of her writing involves her autobiography, The Story of a Soul. And the legend is that anyone who reads this through from beginning to end will be healed of an illness. Does it work for everyone? I don't know because I don't know if a non-believer reading it if it would work if it's the power of positive thinking, but I know personally that the story has had many, many, um, many, many supports, many instances of it actually working. <clears throat> it's a very simple story. Therese had tuberculosis. She became very ill in the harsh environment of convent life in the late 1800s and she was encouraged while she lay dying to write the secrets about her deep love of Jesus 
um, by her older sister Marie, who was also um, a nun in the convent. Uh, there were four nuns in the family, the Martin family. Therese was the youngest and the most devout and famous. And a month before she died, um, her sister encouraged her to write her biography, her, her loving um, relationship with God and the kindness of God. Her sister suggested this idea to the mother superior, who agreed just with the idea that it be written as a letter to the mother superior, kind of like um, a farewell letter, and that it be printed. And anyway, 2,000 copies were printed right after Therese died. They sold out locally immediately. A few years later, 47,000 copies were circulated by 1915, 164,000 copies. Now these are tremendous numbers of manuscripts or copies to be circulated at that time. And Therese wrote of a shower of roses falling out of her love for God. That's where the fragrance of the roses come from. The mother in Syria, the mother's superior insisted that the story read is a realistic account of someone who is dying. If it's possible to read it in provincial French, it might be more powerful, but it's very powerful even read in um, just in modern, a modern English translation. We'll take a look at St. Therese, Therese's natal horoscope. Here it is. And she was born um, with the Sun conjunct Saturn in Capricorn. That means that she was just tremendously serious. She really never was childlike or had a childhood, even though she was the youngest in the family. Reading her biographical material, it's as if she was born as a grown-up person. This is a very good actual biography of her by um, Patricia O'Connor. And it just describes her as almost like a little old lady. Um, she had this tremendous urge to go into a convent, which most um, teenagers in France would have fled from even in the 19th century. But she went all of the way to Rome to get special permission to be admitted at the age of 15 instead of later on. And that was, um, was granted by the Pope at that time. And it's quite incredible to read of her audience of that occurring. Her moon, which is the emotions and personality, is in Pisces. And it is in the fifth house of love. And the, the moon relates to the early childhood years. In Pisces, there's a tremendous tie to the other world and to deep emotions. She had her Venus in the sign of Aquarius. Venus is unconditional love. And she was all about looking out for others, healing, anything that had to do with the, um, the being helpful. She helped the younger novitiates during the brief time she was able to work within the walls of the Carmel. And her Venus in Aquarius, and also her Mercury in Sagittarius, the sign of the teacher, showed her ability to teach. She had a Libra ascendant. She was very focused on being fair. Mars was in the first house of her chart. She actually was very, uh, very determined. Her determination was to become a, young, a nun from the time she knew what a nun was. And her older sisters had already been whisked away to a convent. And she was very assertive that she was going to go with them. Power of positive thinking. Mars in the first house. In Libra, the whole idea of pleasantness, justice, there's a lot of discussion about beauty in her manuscript. Jupiter, the planet of philosophy and growth, is in Virgo. And she had relatives who were very ill. Her father and mother both died young and were very ill. And her own focus on health and being a healer in the afterlife from heaven 
is, um, is very much emphasized in her Jupiter, which happens to be in retrograde motion in Virgo. Her Uranus is the high leg in her chart. That's the planet closest to the midheaven, and it's in the tenth house of career. Uranus is the planet of the odd, offbeat, and unexpected. Uranus in the tenth house, or near the midheaven, often gives a very unusual career and sudden rises and falls from fame. And she rose to become world, a worldwide famous figure so immediately and in such an unexpected way after her death. Um, her notoriety, her unusual vocation, all of this is very much reflected in the birth chart. So in conclusion, if you know of anyone who's very ill, um, um, an altar including a rose and possibly an image or holy card or statue of St. Teresa of Lisieux might possibly help. And then again, reading her book, The Story of a Soul, all the way through from beginning to end. It doesn't have to be read in one sitting, but just um, not to skip any parts of it, but to read it over is the secret. And see if it might work for you if you're in need or for someone that you know of. I personally can vouch for it. This is Dickie Jo Mullen in downtown Orlando, Florida. Reverend Dr. Dickie Jo Mullen, astrologer, psychic, and parapsychologist, Dr. Mullen provides the following services, astrology, psychic, rune, and tarot card readings, face-to-face -face and Zoom readings and seances, and webinars and face-to-face -face presentations. Thank you for watching. Reverend Dr. Dickie Jo Mullen can be contacted at her skymaiden at juno.com email address. She also has a Facebook page, which she invites you to view, and her WordPress site, where she has additional resources.